All right, it's a pleasure to be with you this evening. I'm Bob Trammell. I'm the state representative for District 132, which includes uh, part of Neenan, Kelby County, Grantville, Owensville, LaGrange, and a part of Merriweather County. And in the time that I have, I want to talk about an issue uh, that is deeply important to me, um, and it's deeply important to Georgia. There are over 500,000 Georgians that will go to bed tonight without health insurance. Georgia is ranked 48th in the number of individuals in a state that lack insurance coverage. Georgia could have opted to take coverage, but we have not done that yet. But 32 states have opted to expand Medicaid in one form or another. 26 states have outright expanded Medicaid. Six states have done what's called a Section 1115 waiver, which is a negotiated program with the federal government to take advantage of the funds that are available under the Affordable Care Act. But it's not straight Medicaid expansion. The Georgia Chamber of Commerce has recently undertaken and come to a conclusion on a nine-month study about this issue, about the coverage gap in Georgia. And I want to talk just for a second about who these 500,000 Georgians are. You know, if you're between the ages of 18 and 65, you're a single adult, and you don't qualify for one of the medically needy categories, you don't get Medicaid in Georgia, no matter what your income is. Zero to 100% of the poverty level, no coverage. Zero. If you are a single parent with children, that single parent only gets coverage if they make less than 38% of the poverty level. What does that mean in real dollars? It means you have to make less than $7,600 a year. These are our friends and neighbors. This is our workforce. This is a huge moral issue in terms of coverage, but it is also a huge economic development issue. We are fortunate and blessed in Coweta County. We have amazing health care, and we have amazing health care delivery institutions. But if you're in rural Georgia, and you lose your hospital, you can forget economic development. Because economic development will not locate in an area that's lost their hospital. We've lost upwards of four hospitals in Georgia in the last three years. There are 15 that are in danger of closing. It's time for us to act. The economic multiplier effect of the investment that will come with the expanded coverage is undeniable. For every five cents the state puts in in the year 2017, the federal money that will match that is 95 cents. The subsequent year, 94 cents. The subsequent year, 93 cents. Until 2020, and it's 90 cents going forward. That means when we get to 2020 going forward, for every dollar we invest in Georgia, nine federal dollars follow. There's a Georgia State economist who's looked at this issue and he's estimated that expanding Medicaid would create 56,000 new jobs in Georgia. And I'm here to tell you that right here in Coweta County, we are uniquely positioned to benefit from this type of economic expansion and investment. So I appreciate the opportunity to share this with you. I think you'll hear more about this as the General Assembly comes into session for 2017, but we can no longer afford to wait. Because when you look at the chamber study, the Georgia chamber study, I mentioned 32 states, including the District of Columbia in that number have expanded Medicaid. But I wanna talk for just a second about the 19 states that have not done that yet. 
12 states are actively in conversation about an expansion. Georgia's not in that conversation. We're in the seven states that do not have an active conversation about this. And I know that what we'll hear and what we should consider, and I think the Chamber's proposals um, have moved this conversation forward and I, and I welcome that conversation, is about cost, right? How do we pay for it? Right. We're already paying for Medicaid expansion. We're paying for it in New York. We're paying for it in Kentucky. We're paying for it in Ohio. We're paying for it in California. We're paying for it in all the 32 states. And we're not seeing a single benefit from that in Georgia. So my hope is uh, that we can all agree that there is an issue and a problem that we need to look into. We may not agree on what the solution is, but it's time for us to look and address this issue. So I want to thank the Georgia Chamber of Commerce for wading into this conversation and moving it forward. And no matter what you think about the Affordable Care Act, the issue before our General Assembly is, are we going to take advantage of the structure that's in place to help our fellow Georgians and to keep economic investment here in Georgia going, moving forward, and being strong? Thank you so much. God bless you. And vote in November. Thank you.